How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Uh, today I just got a package, opened it up, and it is my malt muncher from Keg King. This is a grain mill and I thought it'd be fun to set it up and give it a little test drive from the video today. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if that's what floats your boat, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, ring the little bell there as well, and you won't miss anything. All right guys, so I have wanted a grain mill for a long time, like before I even thought about distilling, I've wanted a grain mill uh, from the beer days, and I just never really got around to doing it. When you're brewing smaller, you know, 23 liter batches, you can just get the homebrew store to mill for you, not a problem. Now that I'm looking at doing larger volumes and looking at finding starch or sugar sources in sort of slightly different places, I decided it's well worth having a grain mill so I can utilize things like, like the cheap grain you can find at the farm supply stores. Just in case you're not sure what a grain mill is, uh, basically it does an awesome job of smashing up whatever you put through it, generally. But these ones are designed generally for malted barley, although I'm really hoping it's gonna do a bit more than that. In case you're wanting to play along at home as well, uh, this is the Malt Muncher from Keg King. Uh, just a second, let me see if I can give you a closer look at that. There you go. And I'll be honest with you guys, this is one of the cheapest mills on the market. You can get it on um, Amazon or AliExpress, some of the homebrew stores carry them as well, depending on where you are. Uh, I'll see if I can find a link that'll be more international and I'll put it down in the links below. If not, I'll just put a link up from my local homebrew store so you can see what it's like. Anyway, before we get to putting it together, let's see what came in the box. First of all, obviously, the mill itself. It also came with a hand crank that I really hope <laughs> I'm not going to have to use. A wee bag of hardware. A gasket, which I don't know what is for. And this has got to be the hopper, I guess, obviously. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, see if I can't get this put together, eh? So apparently the hopper comes with a protective coating on it, which to be fair is kind of amusing. Uh, and I will say that it's pretty obvious that this is not a super rugged hopper, not that I guess it really needs to be, uh, nor is it particularly large. So to be honest, at some point in time, I might look at uh, upgrading this hopper to fit a little bit more in it because that might be a pain in the ass. Anyway, let me get the rest of this stuff off, eh? All right, so we got all of that off, and looking at this, that's gonna be the, the two ends, and the two sides, right? And I'm assuming this surely has to be what the, the hardware's for. Why do I get the feeling <laughs> that this is going to be very, very fiddly? I guess the plan is to get everything finger tight first uh, and then go around and, uh, and nip everything up afterwards. I'll be back soon, or maybe not so soon. <laughs> Either way, uh, you guys don't have to watch this tedious task. It's really not that bad. You know what, having fat, clumsy fingers is not good for this kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, I guess my comment earlier about it being flimsy is somewhat irrelevant because I guess I, I kind of forgot how, um, how much structural integrity something like this gains when you put it all together. It is definitely a little on the cheap and light side, I'm sure it'll be fine. Especially if you're using it for the volumes that this hopper is uh, intended for. But like I said, if I'm gonna be putting uh, 20 kilos or something through it, 
this may not be the best way to go. <laughs> all right, that is the last one. Let me come show you. So it's all put together now, guys, and this does encourage me a little because that looks like it is set up uh, relatively well to direct the grain towards the center of the rollers, which I know can be a problem with these sorts of things. So if you are at home playing along, like I said, there's, um, I, there's no instructions in the box. There might be some online, but I haven't looked yet, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, there's just three of these on each side, so three, six, uh, 12 of them in total. The next job is to get this mounted on top of the middle of the rollers itself. That should be pretty easy, I hope. So to the looks of it, uh, these screws here just attach onto this bit here. Let's give it a go and see. So that actually fits really, really snugly. I'm impressed with that for what it is. <laughs> cool. Uh, so now I can see what that gasket is for, just to um, stop the sharp edges of the top of the hopper being exposed. So I guess I should get that on too. Yeah. Cool. The next thing that I want to do is get this mounted down to a base board and that's actually what this thing is for. The idea is that this spans the opening of a bucket. Uh, you cut a hole in it, mount this to it, you can pop the whole thing on top of the bucket and mill straight into the bucket. Now the board you use and the way you set it up is probably going to depend on what you plan on milling into. Uh, I see myself doing one of two things. One is milling straight into my big ass fermenter uh, and the second thing is milling into, hold on, <sighs> these food grade buckets so I can uh, move it to wherever it needs to be basically. But actually, I just realized that this is not that long and I am hoping to attach an electric drill to it so I don't have to uh, be there hand cranking all day long. So I'm thinking if I mount it uh, in the middle, I really don't know if I'm going to fit a, uh, a, a drill in there, you know, to get it inside the chuck. I guess I can try. Hold on. <laughs> so I'm thinking I might have to mount it somewhere kind of like this with some overhang uh, here so the the drill can bite but I've just got my little um Ryobi drill and we'll see how close I can get oh <laughs> cool well that's better I can get it all the way in there and I'm going to be honest I don't much feel like measuring anything today So I've got that marked out now, the actual size of the mill uh, with the, the mounting bits at the side here and here. Uh, so the, there'll be a bolt that goes through there and there somewhere. So what I'm thinking is what I probably want to do is make the hole actually a little bit thinner this way. Uh, just to make sure there's not sort of particles escaping out through a little gap there. I don't have any specialty tools really, uh, so I'm thinking the easiest way <clears throat> to cut that hole out is to drill the corners out uh, and then whip around the inside of it with a jigsaw. We will, uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> So if you guys didn't know already, you're probably figuring out right now that I am no carpenter. <laughs> uh, especially when I'm in this kind of mood and um, I don't really feel like measuring things and I just want to get things done and I know that you're not going to be able to see what I've done because it's going to be covered up. Anywho, what I need to do now is get two holes drilled in uh, either side to get the bolts through to mount the mill on top. So I don't actually have the right size bolts 
This is the closest thing I've got that will actually fit the thread. It's way too long, uh, but it should hold it in place for now, just to do a test. So it is mounted now. Um, those bolts being a little too short are a little bit of a problem. Obviously, I'm not going to run it like this. Uh, I'll test it today, but I will get some proper bolts tomorrow at the store. But to test it, check it out. This stuff is steam flaked barley. So it's the same stuff uh, as malted barley, but it hasn't been malted, obviously, and it has been steam flaked. As you can see, this is farm grade stuff. There's uh, some random stuff in there still. Um, but basically what it means is that it's already been gelatinized for us, uh, kind of like quick oats. But uh, I would like to grind this a little bit finer. The problem is this stuff uh, can actually be kind of hard to mill smaller because it's already flat. It has a tendency to um, just go straight through the rollers like that. So I'll see how close I can adjust the rollers and give it a whirl. So to adjust the width of the rollers uh, on this mill, you undo the thumb screw here and the lock nut. And as you rotate this bit here, it adjusts, I guess, the center of the axis for the right hand roller on the side. And then to lock it, you just do the thumb screw up again and the lock nut too. All right guys, the moment of truth. I've got the drill hooked up. Let's get some grain in there. I've got my bucket underneath. Actually, right before I run this, I should probably say that uh, even though you can, with a drill, run this thing at warp speed, sometimes it's not the best to do so, especially if you're doing a whole lot. It can get quite hot and you may end up actually cooking your grain depending on how much you're doing. So I don't need to run it at warp speed. Uh, and to be honest, uh, this probably isn't the best drill for it, but let's give it a whirl. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so it really is <laughs> going to be a problem not having it properly bolted down. But um, let's just see if we can get a test through, and then I'll get that fixed for the uh, the first production run. That actually worked pretty well, but let's have a look inside and see whether it's actually broken that grain up much at all. Oh yeah, <laughs> cool. So this is the original stuff uh, that has not been milled again by me. And that is the stuff that I just milled that's just gone through once. Uh, it's potentially not broken up quite as much as I would have hoped, but you can see quite a big difference. And um, see how there's the, uh, and you can see the, you know, the powdery sort of flowery stuff on my hands as well. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Perhaps uh, I could double mill it if I really wanted to. So there you have it team, my Keg King Malt Muncher is, uh, is all set up. Well, pretty much set up. I just need to get a couple of better bolts. All ready to go. Uh, and I am really looking forward to using that in production. So you probably want to stick around for next week, hopefully next week, if a few things arrive in the mail. Uh, and we'll be doing something kind of exciting. The Patreons will already know what I'm talking about. And this is a good time to say a huge thank you to you uh, for contributing to the channel. It is thoroughly appreciated. I appreciate it and I'm sure everyone else that is watching appreciates it as well. It's because of you guys that I get to do this, so, so really thank you. So once again team, this is not one of the high-end grain mills that's out there, but uh, you can get them for about a hundred bucks, which is next to nothing when you think about being able to uh, crush up your own stuff to mash with. That's pretty cool. I figured I would get a cheap one and see how it goes. Uh, to be honest, I can probably buy two or three of these for the price of uh, a good one anyway. So it's, um, it's one of those things. Anyway, guys, thanks a bunch for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really, really liked it, make sure you're subscribed for me and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.